Okay, so in this one, we're gonna be using the reactive web client to call a REST API from our Spring Boot application. We have a server application and we have a client app. So the domain model is super simple, right? We've got books and we've got authors. Now books, the attributes we have here is ISBN to begin with, which is a unique identifier, which identifies that particular book. No two are going to be the same. We're just using a bunch of made up ones, fake data. Uh, actually, ChatGPT generated that for me. So thank you for that, ChatGPT. We also have title on the book. So just the name of the book, the title of the book. And then we have a link to the author from the book, right? And the author has a name and the author has an age and a numeric ID just to have a unique ID for it. So the way that this is set up is that we have a book, that book can have an author, but an author can have many books. So it's a many to one relationship between books and authors, right? So a book can have one author, but an author can have many books. Books. That's our domain. Let's see it in action. So we're going to use Postman for that. So the server application is already running and it's running on port 8181, which I've changed in the configuration there because it needs to be different from the default port of 8080 because we're going to be having our client application run on port 8080. So 8181, and it only has a single endpoint that we really care about, and that's forward slash books. So if we make a call to forward slash books, which we can do like that, we can see we have a list of results here. What's worth pointing out before we dig into the individual results is the wrapper around them. So we're using the pagination that's built into Spring here, and it gives all of this extra metadata. So we can see we've got a pageable object. It's got information on whether or not the results are sorted or not, and he offsets the page number, the page size. So we can hit this REST API with different page numbers and get different results. We can actually hit it with different sizes and get different size pages back. You get all this for free when you use pagination inside of Spring. So you might be thinking, Aaron, why are you pointing this out to me? The reason is that you'll see this represented in a domain object on our client side a little bit later on. And it's gonna have this information like last total pages, size, number. So look out for that. The real interesting bit is in the content, right? So this content is a list of books. And we've got here an ISBN, a title, shadow in the attic, and then author. The author is nested. So we've got here author, but then we've got another JSON object with the ID, the name, and the age. And we can see we've got a whole bunch of these, the last ember by Adeline Rivers, the forgotten key, so on, so forth. So this is all the information that's available on our server application. We're going to take our client application now and implement it so it can call the server, get this information, and then display it on its own REST API. So that's the server application. Let's not worry about that anymore. We'll have it running in the background. Let's take a look at the client application code. So let's take a quick look through the dependencies to make sure they match what we had in the initializer. We can see here we've got the Spring Boot starter web flux. So all of our reactive stuff in Netty comes along with that. And there's Lombok. And then we just have the starter, reactor test, all of the basic stuff. Let's take a look at what we actually have going on here. So I've put a bit of a, an additional skeleton, an additional skeleton, sounds like a metal album. So I've put together the bare bones of what this application looks like, right? So a really vanilla application like this would have three layers. So at the top layer, you'd have presentation and that's where you'd present your data. You got the middle layer, which is your service layer, and that's where you deal with your business logic. And then you have at the bottom your persistence layer, and that's where you deal with things like databases and NoSQL databases. And we're not dealing with any databases or persistence layers in this one, so we can just knock that off the bottom. We are dealing with an external REST API. So essentially we have two layers. We have presentation where we deal with all our REST API bits and pieces. And then we have our service layer where we deal with business logic. And I'm including that call to the third party REST API as our business logic. So let's just go through this so you can kind of make that make sense. So at the top here, we've got the books controller. So the books controller has a single endpoint on it and it's just list all of the books that you have. This will via the magic of the service layer, do a call to the third party REST API when I say third party, it's like the other one that's running and then get all of the books and then this will then look to display them. It's not doing anything at the moment. It's just going to blow up because it's got this unsupported operation exception. But this is where we do our actual logic and we'll be calling our book service for this. What's worth pointing out is a few things on this. So obviously forward slash books with a git mapping. So we'll do git forward slash books to get our books back. And we can pass in a request parameter of the page. So we can say page equals one or page equals two to get different sets of results back. That page will simply just be passed on to the server application to get different pages back. But this is something very, very different here. We've got a flux of book. Now I'm not gonna pretend to be like the absolute expert on this stuff, but here's what I know about a flux. 
So a flux is different from a mono, at least in this way of doing things, right? So a flux can return many, and then a mono usually returns one. Neither of these things can return null, but they can be empty. So you might be thinking, oh, this is like fairly familiar to the whole like optional and stream stuff. And yes, they're fairly similar, but they are different. And hopefully this will shed some light on how. So we're gonna return a flux of books. So think of it as like a stream of book, but not really. It's gonna be many books, right? That's what we're gonna be returning. Now you may be wondering like, where's the response entity? Strictly speaking, you don't need the response entity. The response entity is there, so you can change things like uh, your HTTP status code. In this case, we just wanna return it as okay, which will do that if we return a flux of books. Let's keep it simple. We haven't done any implementation here, but we do know that we're gonna be calling the book service because that's our middle layer, that's our business logic. So let's take a look, look at what a book service does has a single method on it, which is get books. We pass in the page, which is just an integer, and we get that flux of books back. So let me just show you the implementation of the book service quickly. Unsupported operation exception, it will blow up if we call it. We haven't implemented this yet. But we do know this is going to be calling the book client. So the book service is there to do all of the generic business logic around handling books, whereas the book client is specifically there to call the server application. It makes those HTTP calls. So the book client interface looks a little bit like this. Get book, passing in the page, which is an integer. But we can see here, it returns a mono of page response book, which seems super, super complicated. But let's break down what that means. We know what the book is, right? So we know what that entity of the book looks like. The page response was the thing that I was referring referring to earlier. It's a main object on our client side a little bit later on. So this is all of the metadata around pagination, things like, in fact, let's look at the object. So we can see it's got like total pages, total elements, size, number, number of elements. So all of this stuff is all of the metadata that was in Postman, this stuff, okay? So we need some object to model that. And we can see inside of content, it takes a generic. So the generic is where we can specify the type of what the content will be. And if we take a look at the book, we can see that it's got the ISBN, the title and the author there. The author is an object in itself. It just has the ID and the name. The straightforward POJOs, plain old Java objects, and we've used the long back annotations to make things a little bit easier on ourselves so we don't have to do all that boilerplate code. Hello, quick interruption. So I'm trying to get as many people into software development as wants to. So why not like and subscribe because it really helps out. And why not share this with somebody you think could benefit? Maybe they wanna have a career change. Maybe they're just wanting to learn how to code. All the information's here and it's all for free. And if you do have any ideas on stuff that you wanna see that currently is on the channel, comment below. So what this means is page response needs a type for the list of objects that constitutes its contents. It's going to be book. And then the mono is one thing in the reactive way of doing things. We are returning many books but as the object is the paged response, we either have a page response with those many objects or we don't. So it's a mono rather than a flux at this level. At least that's how I think it's done. It seems to work. So that's what we're gonna do. So this is the books client. And as before, it doesn't have any implementation. So you can see here, it just throws an unsupported exception. So I think the best place to start is going to be the client and then we'll work our way up the various levels of abstraction until we can hit this REST API, have it call the server, and then we'll return the information. And we'll do all of this with the web client. So I'm gonna go ahead and implement this now to say if you're waiting and I'll talk you through what this implementation looks like. So here's our implementation, let's start at the top. So we've got here the web client reference and we are injecting this, we're auto wiring this by using the constructor. So the constructor for books client impl takes a web client and then we'll assign that web client to our private instance variable here. We don't need at auto wired on the top of this. Spring just knows that as this is the only constructor that's explicit, it will attempt to auto wire on this one. And then we've got our get books implementation here, right? So let's just skip over this and then I'll come back to this in a moment. So we've got returns. So we're returning whatever's returned at the end of this. We're referencing a web client and we're calling dot get on our web client. So that refers to the HTTP verb get. Okay, and then we've got the URI that we're specifying which is forward slash books. So that's the same one that we were calling on Postman. So the endpoint. Notice that we aren't specifying the host of the server. That's done elsewhere. Again, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. And then we're calling dot retrieve, which makes it happen, makes that retrieve happen. So it's actually gonna do the action of, of sending the request and getting something back. And then the response, we're doing body to mono. So we're taking the body of the response that's been retrieved, and then we are wrapping that in a mono, making that a, a mono that's returned. And that is a page response books that's passed 
into that. So let's go back to this a little bit. So we need to specify what type is going to be returned from this. So like the rest template, this deals in objects. And we're going to say, what type of objects are we dealing with? Well, we're dealing with a pretty complicated one because we're using generics and we're using a page response of books. So rather than just passing that in, that that wouldn't compile. There's, there's not a way of doing that easily because you can't do page response book dot class doesn't work like that. So we need to have this parameterized type reference and then pass that in. It's probably not worth doing a whole lot more thinking on this one because then we get into things like type erasure and I'll do a separate video on that one. But just know for the moment, the purpose of this is to say what type of objects are we dealing with. We are returning a mono page response book from this method. So that's our client implemented. Let's take a look at our service implementation. So the purpose of what we're doing here is we're going to call the books client, get those books, and then we want to return a flux of book, right? Because we don't really care too much about that page metadata. We only really care about our books. And there's going to be many books. So it's a flux and not a mono at this point. So let me implement this and I'll talk you through it three line implementation, but it's going to take some explaining. So the first one, we're just calling the books client, get books, passing in the page. That's going to get us back our mono page response of books. We're calling dot map on that, which essentially goes inside of the mono. This is the way I think about it, right? It kind of like dives inside of the mono to get access to what's inside, which in this case is going to be that page response object. Now we've mentioned before that we don't really care too much about all of that total page business or size of a page or what page we're on, all that metadata. We don't really care about that, at least in this method. So we just want to get the content from that, right? Which is going to be our list of books. So that's exactly what we're doing with this method. So we're going inside of the mono and then on the page response, give me the content, which is our list of books. And then there's this line. We need to return a flux from this method because it has multiple books. And the way that we do that is by calling flat map to many. So flat map is a functional concept, which basically when you call flat map on something, you can do something on what it wraps, but it has to return the same type. So when you flat map something, so if you flat map object of type X, it will still return object of X. If you flat map an optional, it will still need to return an optional. This one works in a little bit of a different way because you are doing a flat map on many, many referring to the flux. It's all a little bit confusing, but TLDR is we can call flat map many on a mono and we can get a flux back. And that's why we're using that line. I'm not really happy with that definition. So I'm going to link to the doc so you can read it through. It's probably more than a video's worth to explore all of those different concepts. I'll link to it. So there's our flat map to many. So we now have our flux of books returned from this method. We've gone from the client level to the service level. We can now call get books and get a flux of books back. Let's now deal with the controller level, which is our presentation layer. So there's our reference to book service. And let me implement this for you. And then we'll talk through it. This one's a little bit simpler than the service layer. So this should be this should be good. We're returning that flux of books, right? So we need to get hold of a flux of books. Oh, how do we do that? Or well, simply we just call book service, which is what we've done here. Book service dot get books, but we know get books needs a page number, right? We've got up here our request param for page, which isn't required. So we can actually pass in a page number, or we can choose not to on our REST API. When it's not provided, we're going to default to zero in this case. And that's what this line is about. So we're doing an optional of nullable on the page. If the page is null, then this becomes zero. If it's provided, then it becomes whatever number has been provided on the REST API. And that gets passed into get books. So quite simply, get the page number from the REST API if it exists. If not, default to page zero. And then pass that to our service layer, bookservice.getbooks, with that page number. And that's going to return us our flux of books. And we get to display that. That's most of what we need to do, but we haven't made our web client available to our application. Remembering that in the client, the books client impl here, we're auto wiring the web client, but it has to be in our spring context to begin with. And we also saw here that we're not specifying the host of the web client. We do that in our configuration. Let's go up to our configuration. Let's create a new file up here. And I'm going to call this one web client config .java. Okay. And we need to put configuration on this class to tell spring that this is where it should look for configuration beans and the bean that we want to make available. Remembering a bean is an object that can be placed into the spring context. So we use the bean annotation for that. And the type that we want to make available is the web client and we create one super easily. So we do web client dot Create. And this is where we specify our host, which in this case is HTTP localhost, and it's running on port 8181. So that is the address or the, the host, host and port, I suppose, for the server application that's currently running. 
what we've got here is create a web client using the base host port of localhost 8181. So whatever we call endpoint wise, it's always going to hit that server and return that web client where it needs to be injected. That should be everything that we need to do to this client application to use the web client to call the server application. So what we'll do is start up this application, which we can do from the terminal here. We'll call the Maven wrapper, which is this one over here. And we're going to say spring boot run. So you'll notice that this is a little bit different from what we've seen in previous tutorials because we aren't using Tomcat, we're using Netty. It's still running a port 8080, but it is a different application container entirely. This is the non-blocking one, whereas Tomcat is the blocking one. So it's running. Let's try it out. Let's go over to Postman. So this is our server application. Let's just hit this endpoint to make sure it's still running. Looking good. Let's now call our client application. So change the port to 8080. We still have forward slash books as our endpoint. But what we're expecting to get back is a HTTP 200, but it will just be a list of books. There'll be none of this extra pagination metadata. It'll just be a list of books. The first one being The Shadow in the Attic by Abigail Rose. So let's send this and see what we get back. Fantastic, that was quick. Here's our list of books. The Shadow in the Attic, Abigail Rose, Beyond the Horizon. It's all looking good. Good. Let's just take a look at the server logs to see what they look like because our server logs are set up to show every request. So these are logs of the server here and we can see that we've got a HTTP 200. We are just getting a single request, a forward slash books, page number zero, size 20. So all of the default stuff. Let's make a call to our client with a different page number, which we can do by doing page equals two. We're getting the same books back. Reason for that is we haven't passed in the query parameters to our web client. Let's fix that. So back in the web client, we've changed the forward slash books, which is a straightforward string inside of URI to this nice little builder pattern here. So we're able to get hold of the builder and then call path on it, which is still forward slash books. But this time around, we can actually pass in the query parameter, which is page using the page integer that is passed in to the method. That should allow us to do our page pagination pagination so let's restart the application and see it working hopefully super quick restart back to postman okay here we go we've got here the shadow in the attic we know that to be the book from page one even though we specify page two in the url so we're going to hit this again and hopefully this should give us a different set of books those for page two and we'll double check that in the logs this time so let's click send the dragon's lair the secret society the vanishing village looking good let's do page three just to make triply sure the seventh tower the missing link Curse would looking good. Let's look at the logs for our server. There we go. Page request number zero, page request number two, page request number three. So the pages are now being passed through to the server from the client looking good. So I'm not for one moment going to pretend to be the expert on the spring reactive way of doing things. It's all right. There's definitely some concepts in there which are new and perhaps a little bit different from what you might be used to. So the concept of a flux, the concept of a mono, yeah, they kind of have parallels with the stream and the optional, but they're its own thing entirely. The magic behind this, of course, is if you're dealing with loads of streaming data, you're just in a, in a world where it needs to be just like the quickest it possibly could be, then this could be a really, really good solution for you. And it's certainly the most modern. I would argue that actually the more more traditional way of doing things is simpler, but I just wonder if that will change over time as this sort of stuff just becomes more of the norm. So as per usual, I'm just gonna commit this, push this one up to GitHub so you can get hold of this code and you can play with it yourself. And there we go. We've managed to use the reactive web client to call a REST API from a Spring Boot application. Is it the most optimal implementation? Probably not. So if you have some suggestions on how to improve it, I'd love to hear them. Please leave those in the comments below. Now, if you want to kind of contrast this to the more traditional way of doing things, and I totally recommend that you do, check out this tutorial where we build a REST API completely from scratch in Spring Boot, but this one using Spring Web, Spring MVC, the traditional stack. I'll see you over there.